Do you know your Myers-Briggs profile? I'm an INTJ, or at least I was the last time I took it. I'm also a big fan of DISC, where I used to be a really strong C since I've been running my business. I th think that's changed a little bit. The world of personality testing is, is kind of interesting, and I think there's a couple major camps out there of people who are really against it and people who are really for it. I'll call it kind of the bear case and the bull case. On today's episode, I wanna tell you why I really think both of those camps are, are wrong and a middle ground that will help you use personality tests in a more effective way. Hi, my name is Matt Jertsen. I am the host of the Leadership Launchpad, the founder of Better Everyday Studios. I'm so excited to have you on the show today. My goal with this show is to help managers by bringing them actionable insights that will improve both their own performance and the performance of those around them. I'm pulling from all of the experiences that I, that I have had as a Air Force instructor pilot, as a learning and development leader at SpaceX, and now working with startups and other successful organizations all around the country. There's just so much to this idea of leading other people. I really think it's one of the hardest things that we can do out there. And my goal with this show is to help you improve your own skills. You know, there's a lot of organization, organizations which use personality tests for a lot of different things. And so today what I want to do is I kind of kind of want to break this conversation up into three parts. First, I want to explain the bear case to personality tests, the organizations that like really, really believe in this stuff. Then I want to focus on the bear case as to, you know, the people who really think you should never use personality tests. And then I'm going to find the middle ground to give you a better way to use personality tests. So what's what's the bull case? Well, I think the bull case comes back to this idea of we want to lean into people's strengths. You know, everybody has their own predilections, their own tendencies and things that they prefer. And so if we can give people a test which will help them understand their preferences even, you know, even if they don't consciously understand them, the idea is that we can kind of get in underneath them. It can help us hire better, you know, put people in jobs better. And there's organizations that actually do that. There's organizations that have every single new, you know, every single candidate take a personality test and use that to determine, is this going to be the best fit for our team? You know, we have a team filled with this type personality type. Should we bring in some diversity or will that diversity cause a lot of conflict? It might help them determine who should go to which project or which job. The whole point saying that we can play to people's strengths. You know, I already mentioned Myers-Briggs and DISC. Predictive Index is a really big one that I'm seeing with a lot of organizations now. Gallup Strengths or Strength Finders is another big one. And all of this kind of comes down to this idea of if you think about, you know, performance, performance of any individual is often on an exponential curve where, you know, getting better when you're in a really low skill area doesn't really lead to a lot of gains for the business, where as if you can improve your strengths marginally, it really, you know, shoots up your performance a whole lot. And so if we can focus on the strengths of making sure that we let people do the things they are excellent at versus trying to take the things that they're bad at and make them mediocre at it, let, let's do the, the, the former, right? Let's focus on the things that they can really be exceptional at. And so that's what these companies are trying to do. It's It's all coming from a good place, right? Like where they're, they're all trying to just make it so that everybody is doing the things that they are most passionate about and that they will be best at. That's, that's the bull case. The bear case says that that's all a bunch of bull, <laughs> right? The bear case stems from this idea that for the vast majority of these personality tests, there's no scientific backing to any of them. And that's honestly, largely true for the majority of them, right? They they tend to change quite frequently. You know, the test isn't necessarily tell, saying anything about you, big picture. It's saying things about you as a moment. I At that moment, you know, I, I for one have just said, I kind of as I opened the conversation, my DISC profile has changed dramatically since I have started my own business because I've had to be much more forceful, much more outgoing. And so I've shifted very much from a C, a conscientious kind of personality to a D, a more dominance related personality, just because I, I had to. And so there's not a lot of scientific backing behind it. There, what there, there is one exception to that, 
Ocean or the Big Five Personality Index, which I think stands for openness, conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness, and neuroticism. There's a ton of scientific backing around the Big Five Personality Test. The thing is, is you don't hear a lot about it. And the reason is, is because there's no IP associated with it. Predictive Index, DISC, Myers-Briggs, there's lots of intellectual property kind of locking up that stuff and making it so it can be incredibly profitable to sell that into companies, uh, not so much with the big five personality tests. And so that's another thing that people push against this is it's just like clearly a big industry to make a ton of money. So you just throw it all out because it's garbage. Now, I agree with the scientific backing piece. I totally agree with the idea that we should not be making big decisions about our organizations or whether or not to promote people based on these things. But I think they're a lot of fun. <laughs> you know, I think they're really interesting and they may not give you like the final truth about an individual, but they can be a data point. And so the number one way that I think it's effective for any manager to use personality tests, honestly, is as team building exercises. Use these tests as the start of interesting conversations amongst your team. Because if you've ever heard me say anything about leadership, you will hear me say again and again that trust is the foundation of leadership. Having a you know, having trusting relationships between the members of your team, that is a big part of your job as a manager is building strong relationships as them between people on your team as people and not just coworkers. And personality tests is one really great way that you can do that. Now, am I willing to pay a hundred dollar license for every single person on my team for that team building activity? I don't know. If I have a budget that I can use, maybe. Um, but the good thing is, is there's tons of really great free things out there. You know, 16personalities.com is a free Myers-Briggs test that anybody can take. There, there's lots of free disc profiles, free, you know, big five personality tests. Ocean is one that you can get for free. So there's lots of free ways you can get access to this information, which I, which I highly encourage you to do. So let's step back a little bit. Personality tests. There's lots of them out there. They can be a little bit controversial, but I don't think they need to be. You have the bulls who are saying this gives you critical information about your people. You have the bears that say, no, it's all garbage. There's no scientific basis to any of this. You should throw it all out. The right answer, in my opinion, the way I have seen it used successfully, the way we use it in our leadership programs at Better Everyday Studios is as the start of a conversation as a team building activity where people learn something new about each other. Oh, hey, I didn't realize that you were interested in that. Oh, wow. Now I understand why it is so difficult for us to talk, right? Again, it's not meant to be the end all be all, but it can start interesting conversations. It can get people connecting, which again, in my opinion, is one of the number one roles of a manager if you want to build a high performing team. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, I would love if you would share this episode with a few other people. I can't tell you how much it means to me when people share this show with other people because that honestly, truly is how we grow. So I really hope to see you next time on The Leadership Launchpad. Thank you so much for listening to today's show. If you are looking for help turning your organization's great engineers into great managers, me and my team at Better Everyday Studios would love to help. We deliver targeted and interactive training workshops that are designed to help build the three fundamental skills of any new manager, building trust, giving feedback, and setting goals. Reach out to me through matt at bettereverydaystudios.com so we can start making your organization better every day.